Hi, how's it? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, how are you doing? It's your girl, Animated for Jesus. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're stellar. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch, you guys. Um, let us just get straight into this message. So, um, I wanted to come here to let you guys know how I'm doing. Ever since starting my animated channel, things are slow. Uh, very slow. Everything is growing very slowly. But it's alright, because at the end of the day, we wait on Jesus. Uh, that is what's going on in my animated channel, but I just wanted to put it out there and make it clear that a fear is not what it is that I'm going to walk around doing, due to the fact that it is like so obviously clear that God has my back. And with that being true, I mean, who is scared anymore, you know? If God be for us, who can be against us? Anyway, so everything is slow, and I'm pretty aware that it's because of an onslaught of sorcery, like just a lot of dingy stuff going on. But it doesn't really matter that that's what's happening, because at the end of the day, God is on my side. And literally nothing else matters. Okay? I also just kind of wanted to put it out there that my, uh, I've been under a lot of spiritual attack. It's been really bad. Like, totally terrible. But it's a can, again, because Jesus Christ is Lord. The Lord is king. And those who masquerade as angels of light, he's onto them, okay? No matter how strongly people might feel differently, no matter how much they might want to do a strange thing in the streets, hopping up and down them, it doesn't really matter. You know, the Bible is written that a prophet or a prophetess has no honor in his own home village. So because there's no honor there, everybody just keeps acting a fool, doing whatever they want to do. So let them do whatever they want to do. Because eventually, like, something's gonna give again. Something's totally gonna give, like, it's gonna give. Anyway, um, I feel like I've said absolutely nothing this entire time. I need to have something solid to speak, because this here is, I'm discouraged, that's the thing. I'm discouraged, you guys. I'm discouraged. I'm discouraged because my new channel is moving really slowly. And I'm, I'm a little bit afraid, I'm nervous, you know, that I'm not going to grow at the rate that I need to grow because I need to get out of, like, some kind of a grain. But, you know, Jesus Christ is Lord, and we're just going to wait for the Lord to do what the Lord will do. And I'm, I'm busy getting used to as well, you know, this, this new channel, this animated channel. Not seeing my actual face, but like the face of an animated doll is, it's, it's, it takes quite a lot of getting used to. Plus, you know, I'm starting again from scratch. And so, tap to now start building a brand spanking new identity and way of doing stuff. It's just really rough, but I spoke about that in the last video that I did, and I hear mine. Anywho, but I really hope that you, you are liking this, that, that, that it's catching on you, that you think it's, it's lovely, because I want people to find Jesus and the gospel lovely, okay? Demonic attack is real, and it's alive, and I'm under a severity of it, but I'm not afraid, as I ought, as I should be according to the darkness, just enough, you know? But love casts out fear, perfect love casts out fear. And he who has been made perfect in love dies not fear, okay? Like, we just don't do that. But y'all, I've got, like, I need to, like, tell some stories that I just... I want to go back to the way that I used to do things. I want to speak my heart and my mind. I want to deliver the work that I deliver, the way that I used to deliver it without trepidation, chaos in my heart. I don't want to be scared. I don't want to feel like, oh, I'm going to be boring, and I'm going to be long-winding, and it's just going to be so tarnishing. I don't want to feel that way. I just want to rock up and do what I do, because it's just what I do, you know? 
But I'm so insecure in this new channel because it's like, I'm animated. And I, I, I don't know how I'm coming off across because so far I haven't been embraced. I haven't been received. I've uploaded on TikTok, I've uploaded on Facebook, and it's all dead there. But, you know, we just continue because that's what the Lord will have us do. I'm starting a new life, it's my new identity, and in the future, should the Lord give us a future, should we have, like, more years here on the earth, like, lots and lots of more years? The intention is to just have this keep going, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just to have this keep going, to have people constantly edified by some animated doll that is not really truly me. I have to share my heart, I have to speak the truth of what I am seeing. I just, I don't even know where to start though because, you know, I'm so used to the way that I used to do things and sharing prophecy that way. I'm just so used to the old way of doing things. I'm so used to it. But there's a lot of perversity going on on the part of the kingdom of darkness and I'm just, I want to get out of that. I just want to get out of that. My, where does that I come from is dark, you guys. You know, it's just eroded with so much sensuality. There's so much wealth of filthiness. And it appears nobody seems to be coming up out of it. You know, when Jesus Christ said that a prophet has got no honor in his own backyard, that's exactly what's going on over here with me. And I just, I was just always talking about the things of Jesus. And everybody was just always just like, who cares to listen? You know what I mean? So now here it is, I've started this new animated channel and literally nobody's watching me. And it's just so sore to my heart. It's heartbreaking. But I will strive and I will push. I just, I need to find a way to keep myself motivated. And I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. But I will. Because, I, I mean, there is literally no choice. I don't have an option to go back to a place where it is that I was being just abused by filthy animals. We don't want any such thing going on in our lives. Anyway. But, you know, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord will, will grant me understanding as to... Whether or not this is worth my while, I do believe, I mean, it definitely is. There's no way that he wants me still in that space, but I just keep going and going and going in this place. I'm excited, though, for, <laughs> you know how I said in my last video that it's going to get worse before it gets better for me. In the sense that I'm going to be pursued, like, the, the, the devil does not go out without a fight. If you know what I mean, like, the guy is insistent, persistent, and ridiculous in so being. Like, he will out you, pursue you into the outer depth of the jungle. And even when you hide in some conspicuous hole, he will still try to dig it and dig it and locate you and then finish what he started. Like, yeah. So, flight from darkness is something that we can never quit doing. We can never stop doing it. Like, we just have to keep running from darkness. Ultimately, it will scale back. It must. It does not have an option to just carry on doing whatever it wants in the streets. Okay? It has to eventually just subside. It can't just carry on as normal. But in the run-up to it finally subsiding and doing a different thing, being better, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, really, evil can't really be better, but, like, just leave us alone? In the run-up to it, leaving us alone, it's just gonna keep following. So, when you flee from darkness, you guys, it's gonna be all up in your hair. It will be all up on your scalp like a tick. It's going to be all up in your shoes like some socks, you know? It's just not gonna wanna leave. But it is in striving and persisting that you're done. Fight. You're done with this old, ugly life. And so you must just push forward. And that's what I'm doing. I'm pushing forward with my animated channel. And I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. I think it's so cute. But uh, I don't know. Like, people are yet to discover the cuteness. And my prayer is that once they finally happen upon the cuteness, they'll never be able to walk away from it. Because I like it. But, you know, it's, it's hard to motivate yourself, to encourage yourself when nobody else is actually trying to. You know? Because the kingdom of darkness is all about isolating the living daylights out of the servants of God. Thinking that we're going to leave Jesus or something. Except that the pearl of great price, nobody throws it away. Alright, a merchant goes and sells everything that he has. Everything. In order to acquire this pearl of great price. But the kingdom of darkness, 
They work like little animals. To ascertain that you walk away from a god that will never let you be snatched out of his hands. So it's like a whole travesty, but it's okay. Like, let them persist in that travesty. But Jesus Christ is totally Lord, okay? And so we are not to be discouraged. We are not to be discombobulated and confounded. We are not to be hurt by the hurting hurties. That which hurts and goes bump in the night, we are not to be shook by it. Because the moment you allow yourself to get all shook is the moment you start to flounder and walk away from the only thing that's ever made sense in your life. I'm a child of God. I'm a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's like a whole thing. I'm in love with that. I'm in love with Christ. And nobody's going to take that away from me. All right? But people are going to keep trying and trying. And in their little endeavors, I'm going to break my heart, my achy, breaky heart. I just don't think it understands because it thinks it's Billy Ray Cyrus. But it's all right because I am a daughter of God. And Jesus has a lot to say about my daughterness. And frankly, it can't be stolen. So all the best with everything. Try to steal. My God. Because he's God. Like, he's God. Like, can't nobody steal God? Nobody really steals God. Like, who do you know that steals God? Who? Who? Come on. He's the creator of the universe. Nobody steals God. Absolutely nobody steals God. But people are trying to steal God from Christians. It's like, whoa. He's the one that finds us. Not the other way around, actually. Okay? Not the other way around. Like, God is the one that finds us. Like, he locates us, like, with a magnifying glass and everything. He finds us, all right? Yeah. And and then and then we realize that we're lost. Mm. He's the one that goes out as the shepherd uh, and fetches the sheep, you know? He leaves the 99 and goes and grabs the one lost sheep. That's just what Jesus does. He's the one that finds us. So, I mean, if you're the lost one, how can you possibly lose the one who finds you? How? How can you possibly lose Jesus when he's found you? You know, the Bible says that, like, people, like, I'm talking about all these people trying to make Christians walk away from God. Like, whoa. Okay? Like, whoa. Whoa. Like, stop. Woe to you, Pharisee, teacher of the law. Like, stop. Stop. You know? But they don't want to stop. They don't want to stop. They, they think it's like a whole thing to just keep on going with this rubbish. Yeah, the Bible says that we love him because he loved us first. Okay? We love him because he loved us first. Like, what? That's like a whole thing. Okay? So, I mean, when somebody loves you first, how can you possibly steal him? Like, he found you sitting there unloved and everything. And he's able to love you, and then you think he can be stolen? Like, who in the world takes away God from a person? Like, anyway, whatever. The kingdom of darkness is all naive. You know? That's what I'm talking about. Like, you're always casting all these spells on Christians to make us walk away from God. And it's like, who steals the creator. I mean, he made everything. So you can't steal him from anywhere. Like, if he's going to hang out in a place, he's just staying. Like, that's it. And unless he makes a decision to walk out, he's not leaving. Okay? He's not leaving. He is going nowhere. All right? His feet are lodged in the cement over there. And they're not going anywhere. But, like, people, oh, people are always just trying stuff. They're always just attempting brand spanking you weird things. And these weird things that they do make me crease my forehead. Like, I'm very good of you. Like, I came to Christ and it was like a whole thing. And then you want to steal Jesus? What? You want to steal Jesus? What? Who steals the creator? Huh. It's just so brazen, you know? It's brazen. It's really brazen. Like, whoa, you know? Like, tall brazen. As in, like, the height of a basketball player. Brazen. It's that tall. But anyway, yeah. So, I've got people actually working really hard to make me walk away from God. And I'm like, how can I walk away from God when he's the one walking with me? He's walking with me. I can't walk away from him. He's keeping me there. He chose me. He gave me a second chance and said, Filthy rags. I will make them new. I will make you white as snow. You will be right as rain. And I was like, okay, I'll take it. I'll accept. I'll embrace. I'm cool with the whole heaven thing. Please, like, I'll take it. Like, it, it sounds great. It sounds really awesome. And then I ran with it. Because, I mean, like, he's the one that calls me. I don't call him. The Bible says that no one can choose God, you know? 
No one. Like, all the sin and falling short of the glory of God, like, no one can choose God. Absolutely nobody. So, I mean, really, if you end up in Christ, you were chose, eh? You were chose. You were chosen. You were chosen. You, you cannot not not be chosen. You can't just go to heaven and be like, hey, I'm here. Like, heaven kind of choose you. Because we were born dead in trespasses and sins. And so all we can do is just not choose God. Like, we choose the sinful nature, the flesh, you know? We love the flesh. It's like all we do. 24 hours a day, so fleshy. But then the Lord is the one that gives us power by the Holy Spirit to put to death the deeds of the body. So everybody that's actually trying to like proper make us like walk away from Jesus. It's like, what? When has that ever been a thing? Okay. Like John 10 makes it clear that God, the Father, is the one that gives us to the Son. And nobody can pluck us. Okay. Like plucking some eyebrows because they're too bushy. Like, nobody can do that with Christians. Out of the hand of Jesus. It just doesn't happen, you guys. But, like, you know, people can be ambitious. And and really, you know what I think, right? I, I believe that what, what Satan is doing over there is that he's trying to get people who belong to the, like, covens of the world, like the kingdom of darkness. He wants them to keep trying something that is impossible so they can just finish themselves off, you know what I mean? Like, he's just trying to send as many people to hell as possible. So since a Christian is already in the kingdom of heaven, he then causes, like, the kingdom of darkness to just really harass them so they can be super judged, you know? Because when you super persecute a Christian, you just put yourself super extra judgment. When you go to hell, like, it gets really bad then. Because the closer you were to the gospel, the more intense your judgment eternally is. So, essentially, when you persecute a Christian, you condemn yourself even more strongly than before. Meaning that the devil really, when he's out here twisting everybody's ears and noses to hurt the body of Christ, he's actually really not so much gunning for the body of Christ as he is gunning for their souls. Like, he's trying to condemn you further, like, extrema, you know? More extremely. That makes you hurt Christians. That's why the world hates Christ like that. Like, right? Like, if you look at the entertainment industry, they're always mocking Jesus. But when have they ever mocked Allah? When have they ever mocked Krishna? Have you ever heard them coming at Buddha like a, like a ton of bricks? No. It's always Jesus. They have a thing about Jesus. Because they know he's the one true God. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through him. So he gets Madonna to be all sacrilege. He gets Rihanna to be all sacrilege. He gets Katy Perry to be all unreligious anymore. Okay? He gets everybody to just be like, whatever, Jesus. And then, oh, like, whoa. Next thing they go into the grave and discover that they were made to be sacrilege. They were made to be blasphemous, you guys. Because it's not so much that the devil was gunning for Christians. I mean, yeah, he's always targeting us because, like, there's a talking about backs the moment you come to Christ, right? He's always just really hurting us. Maybe even killing us some days. Yeah. But why he does that largely, I believe, is it's not so much about the Christian's salvation. Because to live is Christ, but to die is gain. That's the Bible. Mm. I think that what's going on over there is that the devil is just trying to get those who kill the Christians, those who hurt us, the sacrilege, the ones who sing ugly lyrics in their music, about Jesus, the ones who mock us, the ones who leave Christianity because they were never saved, okay? Like Katy Perry, yeah. And then sing rubbish. He's really just trying to send them to hell. It's about them. And then mocking Christ and, and doing crosses on Hollywood stages and on Grammy stages, like Sam Smith doing strange stuff. Like, of course, he's doing strange stuff against Jesus. Yeah, it's always just Jesus that they're mocking. It's always Christianity. Mm. Because they know that that's the only way, the only truth, the only life. It is only through Jesus Christ, you guys. Only him. Yeah. Only Jesus. Like, yeah. So, of course, like, Sam Smith is going to do a song called Unholy. Unholy. Unholy, you guys. Of course, ta, right? Yeah. He's going to make an, oh, an unholy song. And then, and then mock the body of Christ, and then get entertainment industry people, commenters to be like, ooh, that was a ritual. Only to bring down the article, okay? And then act like, oh, please, no, it's entertainment. But like, have you ever entertained the planet with Allah? Have you? Hmm? Hmm? Have you ever entertained the planet 
with some other religion, except Christianity. No, it's because y'all are being made to mock the one true God. It's like so clear. I see it for what it is. I don't know, I don't know Bobby. I'll see it for what it is. I see it. I see it. I see it, you guys. I see it. And I mean, like, I think a lot of people also see it. I think a lot of people also totally see it. Like, they look at it and they're like, oh my, like, what? I see it. Yeah, but they don't care. They think it's a joke. Mm. Because the devil wants them to think it's a joke, you guys. You know? He wants them to just look at it and be like, ooh. Like, there's nothing to this. Come on. Like, please. I'm just making a joke. I mean, what? Like, look at Little Nazi. Oh, what's his name again? Little Nazi. Mmm. Whatever that guy, okay? Yeah, the one that came out of the closet the other day. And it's like, what? He's been he's doing all these music videos that are all mocking of, no, not a law. Mmm. Okay? He's not even mocking somebody's, like, grandmama. He's mocking Jesus. Like, like what? He's mocking Christianity. And I'm like, what? I mean, do you seriously think that, okay, fine, so we're offended, all right? As Christians, we're totally offended. It's like, what are you doing? Stop, right? Mm. As Christians, we're offended, but more than anything, the devil is, is gunning for, for Nas's X's. Yes, Nas X, that's him. Nas X. Little Nas X. Yes, that guy, that's the soul. The devil is, is gunning for his soul. The devil wants his soul. It's his soul. It is Nas's soul. Like, Nas X's soul is what's at, at stake here. Even though we're irritated with him. I mean, I was irritated. Were you irritated? You should have been irritated. If you weren't irritated, you should have mustered irritation in you. Because, I mean, who doesn't get irritated at that, right? Mmm. Nas X was irritating. But, like, ready and truly, after we get irritated, we die and we go to heaven. So, psh, who cares, right? Yeah. After we get irritated, we die and then we go to heaven. We get elevated in the sky. We become saints forever. Yeah. So really and truly, no matter how much we might get bugged by the bugging, it's about the bugging that, that really, like, their souls must be snatched from the flames of hell because Satan obviously is trying to send them there, you know what I mean? Ah. Oh. I mean, that, that's the entertainment industry, like, you know, like, you know, they're so deceived, these guys, like, yeah. Maybe we shouldn't even be so mad at them all the time. Because the devil has given them a whole chunk of fame and wealth in order to, like, condemn them. And they think they're, 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 they're funny, you know? Hmm. They're sending everybody to hell with them. Like it's written in, 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 in 2 Timothy, I think 4. I stand corrected. It could be even 2 Timothy 3. That evil men and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Like it's a whole treachery. Hmm. So, I mean, with it being a whole treachery, that they're going from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceiving, we should really just feel sorry for them at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Yeah, we should feel sorry for them. We should feel like, ooh, whoa, you're going to hell. So, I'm sorry for you. Hmm. We should be a little bit more compassionate, because, I mean, like, Papa, when Sam Smith is out here chilling on a Grammy stage, singing an unholy song, what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? Hey? What are you going to do with that? Like, the guy's going to hell. Hmm? And hell is not made for us, you know? Like a Bible, it's written in there that it's made for the devil and his angels. And then Sam Smith is still going to go there? That's the name Unholy. Unholy. Like, no. We should feel sorry for Sam Smith. I really do believe that we should do that. But anyway, whatever, you know, these people. It's like it appears there's nothing we can do for them. But, I mean, you know, nobody's too far gone. Do you think people can be far gone? Do you think people can be just totally taken away, like, forever, like... Ooh, nothing can be used there, you know? To reach you for, like, Jesus. Apologists? Why are they so, like, blind, though? Hey? Why? Remember Doja Cat? I mean, like, how did that happen, you know? Like, come on, you gotta see that, like, obviously you've been sent to hell. What are you doing? I mean, what is with the Instagram darkness, you know? Hmm. It's all very confusing. And then you look at the gospel artists, right? Or at least wanna be gospel artists, like, ugh, they're pretending to be gospel artists. Mmm, look at Kirk Franklin. It's like, what's happening over there, dude? You can't carry on like this. Lion and the lamb will bow down to the goats? Whoa! You know? So what are you doing? Come on, Kirk. Like, stomp that underneath your feet. That's what's good. Stomp that under your feet. Everybody say stomp, yeah, that. But you know, it appears Kirk also doesn't get it. Like, I, I just, you know, I, I really don't, I don't understand. Do you understand? Does anybody want to explain to me what's going on over there? But I know, evil men and imposters, they go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. There appears to be nothing that can be done for them. Mmm. 
But, you know, yeah. You know, the Bible does say in, in, in the book of Daniel, in Daniel 12, that in the last days, the wicked are just going to carry on doing weird stuff. And then the righteous are going to, like, carry on doing really awesome things. Like, they're going to just grow in righteousness while the evil are just going to carry on doing evil. You know what I mean? Mm, the wicked will do evil still. Like, it's just going to keep going from bad to worse. Even men and imposters in these last days, they're so perilous. They're just going to carry on. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's to be expected. But, I mean, that does not stop us from feeling all sad for them. You know? I mean, Sam Smith and his unholy song, it's just so very sad. Like, how the mighty have fallen, you know what I mean? Like, they've just fallen from such a dizzy height. Remember, they call me crazy, because you don't think I know what you've done. You go from that to unholy, like, what? Anyway, I don't really know what that's about, but, you know, it's okay. Actually, I do know what it's about. It's about deception, all right? Yeah, I mean... Whoa, okay? Like, whoa. I mean, if you think even about some of these entertainment industry artists, like, what? Hey? Like, these that are all godly. And then they think they're like, ooh, I don't like Jesus anymore. I mean, look at what happened with Britney Spears. Like, chick rocked up on some, I'm a virgin, and I'm waiting for marriage. And then she's actually cutting her hair in front of everybody. What? Hey? They sound so coy and so sweet. Like, remember Beyonce? Yeah. Singing that song, nasty, put some clothes on, I told ya, don't walk out of that house without your clothes on. I mean, bait is actually like, serenading the planet with how it is that it's just not cool to walk around without clothes on. And then next thing she's telling church girls to drop it like a thorshy. I'm like, what? What's happening there? So the girl that used to tell you we don't undress your body is not telling you we undress your body. Like, whoa, what, what shit, which is it, girl? Hey? Which is it? Like, what must we do here? Thank God we're not going according to the gospel according to Beyonce Knowles. Carter. Like, thank God, you know? Yeah, they just got so dark later. And it's like, whoa. Yeah. Which is why I'm afraid to, you know, have children that are going to be very artistic. Next thing they actually make like Katy Perry. Feeling frustrated with gospel music because it's not lucrative like Maverick City. And then going on right ahead and, and just signing a deal with the devil. Ooh, Wow. I don't even know how to deal with that. Do you know how to deal with that? Do you? But that, does it, does it dawn on you as something dealable? I feel like it's undealable. Hey? Mmm. Yeah. I don't know. Hey? It's just, it's also very satanic. And then look at Brad Pitt. What are we gonna do with him? What's anybody gonna do with Brad Pitt? Hey? What's anybody gonna do with Brad Pitt? Come on, let's have a discussion. Let's converse about Brad Pitt. Uh, the guy grew up in a Baptist household. Like mommy and daddy taking him to church like all day and every night. And then next thing Brad Pitt comes around and says that he's an atheist. Next thing he comes around and he's like, okay, fine, no, I'm not an atheist. But I've deconstructed Christianity. And then he's like, no, I do believe in God, but not the one of the Bible. Like, what are you doing? Hmm? What are we going to do with that? I feel sorry for them all, hey? They go and they, they enter the entertainment industry. And because they're so beautiful, everybody just loves them. I mean, they think they're, like, so dark. So dark. Like, wow, right? So that's why I'm scared of having artistic children. Because they might just be, like, dark, you know? Later. Like Katy Perry. Huh. It's funny, the devil's always targeting these artsy-fartsy children. So don't let your kids be artsy-fartsy. Is that what we're doing here? But that's the thing, right? Like, children and people at all, like, God gives us a suite of talentedness, gifts, you know? Mmm. It's unfair that we don't get to exercise them unless we are, like, satanic, hey? Like, you can't survive and be, like, a mega star unless, like, proper, like, properly, unless, okay? You're, like, satanic or something. And besides, who wants to be a star? You guys know that the stars of heaven, yeah, are, like, the fallen angels. That's why they call them stars, these celebrities, because they're, like, fallen angels, okay? Fell from grace. Like, what? Ooh, I mean, what are we going to do with that? What? It's all very disturbing. It is. It is. It's 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 disturbing. It's 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 earth shattering. You know what I mean? Like just earthquake stuff. It's earthquake stuff. What do you think? Hey? Do you agree that it's earthquakey? I think it's earthquakey, like it's it's like an, a magnitude 8.9. Earthquake. Yeah. Hmm. And then there's like Tony Braxton. I mean what, right? Unbreak my heart. 
no, I can't, girl. Yeah, I can't unbreak your heart because you broke your own heart. You did. You broke your own heart, girl. You did. Because you stumbled out all gospel I And mean, the next thing you were stripping it up and naked and talking about all different kinds of last and stuff. I'm like, wow, right? Tony, no, girl. Don't do it. But you know, like with these artists, just like with Beyonce. Yeah. I blame the parents. The parents are the ones that started, started them out in the gospel and Jesus and all that. And then they wanted money more. You know, it's written in God's word that the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And many who have wandered after it have pierced themselves with many pains. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Tony Braxton's parents just wanted the money. So they just allowed their daughter, the, the Braxtons, the, their daughters, to just go licentious. Similarly too, with Beyonce's parents, like, they started out all gospel the next thing, their kids were making so much money from being licentious that they were like, forget it. Forget it. Yeah. So, whatever, okay? All I'm saying is that you can't really take away God from a true Christian. If they've really, really, truly really given their lives over, they're not becoming Katy Perry, okay? It's not happening. Like, I'm not about to become Sam Smith, alright? Okay, look, look, I don't think Sam Smith was ever, like, serious with Jesus or whatever. But I know Katie was, and I know Tony Braxton was. I also know that the late Whitney Houston was. I know that Beyonce was. I know that Rihanna was, at some point, like, all serious with Jesus. And then she goes and does, like, a magazine cover, looking like a nun that's not wearing anything. Like, wow. Hey, wow. It's just, it's all very shocking. But it doesn't matter, because when God has chosen you, he's chosen you, he's chosen you. And you can't be plucked out of his hands. So just because Katy Perry flew like a, a satanic bird, doesn't mean that I'm gonna do it, okay? Doesn't mean that we, some of us, are gonna do it, because we embrace the call of, of Christ, and he's walking with us, and that's it, you know? Hmm. But anyway, I come from a place where I'm very severely persecuted, and everybody's just wreaking so much havoc in my life, and I had to go animate it. What? I'm a doll now, and I don't know how to adjust to that. Because... People are trying to make me Katy Perry. They're trying to make me Beyonce. They're trying to make me someone that's just like, Nasty, put some clothes on. I told ya. Don't walk out that house without your clothes on. Next thing I'm talking about how it is that drop it like a thotty. I don't wanna. Hmm? They want me to just go from being all heavy with Jesus on a podium. And then next thing I'm all heavy with like a cover shoot, a shoot cover, magazine shoot. Wearing barely nothing in a nun's outfit, because my name is Rihanna. I'm not doing it. But you know, they keep trying. Yeah, they, they do. They keep trying. They think that I've made a foolish decision in loving Jesus, and because I'm going through biblical persecution, biblical suffering, biblical everything biblical, they're like, what? This woman, it's only a matter of time, please. She's going to be KT in a minute now. No, I'm not going to be KT, okay? I'm not. I'm just going to be me. Like, in Christ. Animator for Jesus. Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Animator for Jesus. Oh, ho, ho. Yo, what's up? What's up? Animator for Jesus. Oh, ho, ho. Anime, oh, what's up? What's up? I'm like Katy Perry who tried to start a gospel career and it just didn't go anywhere. And then she just went and sold her soul to the devil. Well, I started a gospel ministry with my physical face everywhere. Looking like a real human being breathed into and then I became a living soul yeah and then people persecuted me until I uh, basically just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth hmm they harassed me disgusting men were like I'm gonna take you by fire and by force and I was like ew uh, uh right I'm not doing that impoverished me they took away my career they took away my job they took away my cat my dog like if they could take it they took it all right they took away my wigs. They took away my French manicure with tips. They took away my eyelashes. They took away my teeth. If they could take it, they took it. They removed everything from my backyard. They were like, it's a, it's a, it's a garage sale. We're gonna garage sale your whole life. I was like, what? But it's my life. I don't wanna garage sale it. I don't wanna garage sale my life. I like my life. Don't sell my finger. Don't sell my nose. And please, like, do not sell my cheek. And don't sell my right toe, because I like my life and my body the way that it is. But they were like, we're going to sell your body for parts. And I was like, but, 
and then I thought really deeply, and where else I saw that? I thought deeply, and I scratched my forehead and my head. I was like, where else did they sell a person's everything while they were busy dying? Where else did they gamble for the clothes of a guy that was dying? Where else did they do a garden sale for somebody whose stuff was dying? Like, they took your stuff and they were just like out you gambling over it. Where else did that happen? And then I remember that they cussed lots. They cussed lots, okay? Like, to like what? Gambling? Ah, uh, Marbles. They played a game of marbles. They actually rolled some die for the clothes of Jesus Christ when he was dying. They cast lots for his garments while he was at your die. So it is no wonder people are actually doing a garage sale with my toes. They are doing a garage sale with my nose. They are actually doing a garage sale with my jersey. They're doing a garage sale with my eyelashes. They're doing a garage sale with my teeth. They're doing a garage sale with my fingers. And I'm like, what? I didn't sign up for this, but it doesn't matter. Christ did not sign up for this. He even said, in the garden, take this cup away from me. It would be really great if I didn't have to go through this. But then he went through it because this is what people do. It's what people do when they are just selling you for scraps, okay? While you're busy coughing on blood and about to totally die. And they're like, ooh, this here is five, five dollars and, and 75 cents. This here is seven dollars and 28 cents. This is a dollar 99. And when you look at what's a dollar ninety nine, you discover that your eyelashes are actually being sold for a dollar ninety nine. Imagine that. Everybody's selling everything you is for five dollars. Like five dollars, like everybody are just parting ways with five dollars over your entirety, eh? They are just like exchanging your heart and your liver and your pancreas for like seven dollars. I was like, what? What is going on over here? Alright? Yeah. But then I remembered that Jesus said that no servant is greater than his master. That if they persecute him, they will persecute you also. That if they sell your stuff for $1.99, it's only because they sold his stuff for $1.99. So I was like, you know what, fine. Take my stuff for $1.99. Go on right ahead and take the ring on my finger and sell it for 50 cents. Okay, do you. Like, Papa, you go on right ahead and do you. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, hallelujah, with a $1.99 ring gone. Even though the Lord gave it to us for like $7,000. Like, you are just selling it at a pawn shop for $1.99. Like, that's you. Hmm. Take your, your everything and put it in the garage sale, like a yard sale. Hey? Yeah. Your favorite everything is in a garage sale. And now they're trying to make your body a garage sale. What? What? But that's the beauty about Christ, right? You go and you grab all of those lemons and you make some lemonade. You make some lemonade and you make it nice and super sweet. Because at the end of the day, hallelujah. Say it with me now. Romans 8.28. Yeah, do that. All things work out together for the good of them who love the Lord. And are called according to his purposes. So it doesn't matter that you done sold my, my right toe. For $1.99. Bottom line is, to live as Christ, but to die is gain. And naked I came into this world, and naked shall I leave. God gave, and now he took away, and people sold me for $1.99. Yeah, but blessed be the name of the Lord, hallelujah. Because at the end of the day, I have gathered for myself treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, neither thieves come in and steal. So I'm good. Eternally, I'm good. Ain't nothing on mine being exchanged for a dollar ninety nine in the sky. Yeah, it's only getting exchanged for a dollar ninety nine down here in these nasty earthly streets. So I'm not scared. I ain't scared. Ain't nobody scared. Do you see scared in my face? Please, this is a face that's chill with Christ. I'm relaxed. I'm hanging out on Maxon. I'm chilling. I'm just like soothed in relaxation, cause Christ got this. Mm. Can't nobody take nothing from me if that old Christ done given me eternal life. Is that basic? Yeah. But hey, somebody done sold my, 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 my left thumb for two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Imagine that. Yeah. And then they said that if you, if you want to take three of them, then it's three for the price of two. Huh. I was like, wow. Lord, look at how they are casting lots for my garments. My garments, eh? Like the men of Sodom out here trying to bring out the angels of God that they might lay with them. Now they be selling a whole Christian for two rand fifty on the black market. For two dollars fifty on the black market. I was like, what? All because I refuse to be like Katy Perry. 
all because I refuse to be like Beyonce. I don't want to be a hostage in the entertainment industry, just like Tony Braxton. But nah, dollar ninety nine. That's how much we're gonna sell your entirety for. I'm like, it's all good, and I'll take it. I'll take my body being sold on the black market for a dollar ninety nine cents. Because at the end of the day, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. I'll take that any day. Yeah, when my body is cheap, when my blood is cheap, where a mortuary that stores my cold body is cheap, where my casket is cheap, where a tombstone is cheap, where a gravestone is cheap, where a gurney in a hospital is cheap. Even though a woman was bought with the precious blood of Jesus, so ain't nothing there cheap. It's priceless. But on the earth, we is cheap. Mmm. Yeah, but they want us singing unholy music on a Grammy stage, looking like a little devil, 'cause our names are Sam Smith now. It's all good in the hood. Not about to go and sell out like like Lecrae and and like who that dude that I just spoke about right now. Stomp. Yeah, that stompy guy. Yeah, I'm not gonna do like Herky. Hey, Lion and the Lamb will bow down to the goat. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? And what? Anyway. We must just feel sorry for these people, 'cause even God Himself does not delight in the death of him who dieth. Hey, He's like, what? Don't do it. But they do it. They do it because it's like a thing now. Hey, do what you want, 'cause that's the whole of the law. 'Cause you think you're Alistair Crowley. Hey, yeah, just do whatever you want. Hmm. 'Cause you think you're a Spice Girl. No, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna really, really, really wanna forget Jesus. Ah. If you wanna be my lover, you're gonna have to just leave Jesus. It's okay. I don't wanna be your lover. I don't wanna be your lover. Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, my lover. I don't wanna be a lover of the world because the Lord said that don't love the world or anything in the world for if you, the love of the flesh, the love of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. These things are not from the Father, but are from the world. So don't dig them. Don't do it. Don't make like TLC and dig and dig and dig on them. Just don't do it. <laughs> But just like TLC, they still try to creep. Yeah, in your skin, up your skirt, and everywhere else around. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. We're not walking away from the King of the Universe. But you know, everybody try. Everybody trying to make us walk away from a beautiful God that said, "Don't walk away from me, 'cause I'm beautiful." Ah. But you know these go walking away. It's all good in the hood. I don't trust nobody on this earth. I only trust Christ. He is the one true God, and only He can show me what's good for me. They keep pursuing me, you guys. Hey, like I come from an old channel where I was doing old things in an old way, 'cause everything there is just old and tired. And they still following me. I'm getting all these witchcraft spells cast on me. These nightmares in the middle of the night when I'm trying to give myself some beauty rest. And they're like, "What? You ain't going nowhere." And my last time I checked, I already done gone somewhere. It's called heaven. Oh, I left the earth. Uh, I left it. I left the planet, yo. I might just be still hanging around in these streets, sir, journeying like an alien, like an English alien. I'm an English man in New York. I might still be here, but I'm gone. I'm already gone. I'm already out of here, man. Like I'm as good as ten feet in heaven. Never mind two. I'm gone, but I'm still here, and that's why this body is heavy. It's like meat, rotten meat, just ugh, walking around like Godzilla in a town. One footstep is like ga ga ga, because I just like Papa. Like I, I can't deal. I want to leave. I want to get out of here permanently. I want to leave the earth permanently. But until then, you know, we gotta fill the earth and occupy it. And these people refuse that I should go and fill the earth and occupy it. When I'm like, but Christ is my redeemer. Who your redeemer be? Ain't nobody, 'cause ain't nobody here able to redeem men unless it's Jesus. There is no name under heaven by which men must be saved except for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Amen and Hallelujah, Shmuel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! But people are trying to redeem me through their messianic stunts, and I'm like, hey yo, there is only one Messiah. His name is Jesus. He's been saying it like for a minute. I've been saying it for a minute. I've been saying it. Have you been saying it? I've been saying it. I know you ain't saying it, but I'm saying it. Christ is Lord, yo. Hmm. But don't nobody care to recognize that as a fact. Hmm. 
So, I mean, all these people pursuing me into oblivion, dusting their feet off, thinking that I'm gonna miss them. Now they are just dusting me off, trying to think that I'm like a shelf on a, a trophy on a shelf that they can dust off and re, re, redecorate with. Forget it. I've gone. I've left. And now it's all cold and dingy. That's the thing, eh? Mm. They don't know what they got till it's gone. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. You know when you give the gospel to a bunch of people preaching to them on a street corner, Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Keep doing that for like 10 years straight. And every day you pitch up like clockwork, you don't miss a day. Like Papa, even when you're sick, you're still at your coughing. <laughs> Hallelujah, <laughs> Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Come to the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> yeah, even on your deathbed, you're like, Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. And then when you get resurrected, from your deathbed, you're still like, Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. What? You're a girl that's always preaching. That's standing like a street corner. And then one day you just are like, you know what? Sorry. The Bible says that don't cast your pearls to the pigs and don't give what is sacred to dogs. This they should trample them on the foot and then turn around and tear you to pieces. These people are to be tearing us instead of pieces. I ain't feeling it. I ain't feeling needing pieces no more. I don't want to be no more pieces. I want to be a whole human being. I'm not doing it. This town don't like me no more. I'm not doing it. I'm leaving. Mm. Then you don't come the next day. Yeah. Now you've been there on some hallelujah for 10 years straight. Hallelujah. Even coughing in winter. Hallelujah. Rain or shine. You are on a podium. Hallelujah. And they keep on throwing like apples and peaches and banana peels at you. Ah ha. Mm. And then one day you're like, I ain't doing it. Now one day you're like, you know what? There's another town I know of. These people are hungry. They're emaciated. They're basically boring on being anorexic because they ain't got the words of life. They need the bread of life. That's what's good. Hmm. You then decide that you're going to relocate to that town and then hallelujah, Jesus is Lord them. Tell them that Christ is king. Tell them that, hey, he's coming. Like what? Like get yourselves ready. Prepare your garments. Clean them. Make yourselves a better thing. Yeah, brush them teeth, girl. They dirty. Yeah. Yeah. And then they go and they buy a toothbrush and some toothpaste because they yeeted you. You decide that you're going to move to that town because it's receptive to the message of peace. And then these gangsters that you left behind. That ignored you for 10 years throwing bananas and peaches and pears at you. Mm. Now it's all cold and thunderous in their streets. Because the warmth of Christ ain't there no more. There's no more sun shining there no more. They are just singing, ain't no sunshine when the preacher man is gone. Woo. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. They miss that on the street corners every day. You used to say it, and now ain't nobody there. There's a void. It's all vacuous. It's all empty. The streets are all tumbleweedy. Everything is feeling sad. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. Now it's an echo. In the wilderness, in the far distance, they can hear it almost like, you know, a phantom arm after it's been amputated. They can still feel your presence, but like, you gone. You go. You've been gone a minute now. It's been a few days. Even on the first day when you didn't rock up, they were there already prepared with some bananas to throw at you. And when you didn't pitch, they felt sad that their bananas are still in their hands instead of on your face. And they all actually acting cool or something. Yeah, we don't want her anyway. We don't want him anyway. We don't want that person anyway. We don't want that disciple anyway. It's a good riddance. Tuh. And they spit on the floor where you used to chill. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Every day, every day. Hallelujah, that's you. Mm. But then you decide that you're going to do what Christ has been telling you to do all this time. If they reject the gospel in one town, flee to the next. If they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. Dust your feet off if they don't embrace you. It will be a better day on the day of judgment for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and of Sidon and Tyre than it will be for that town. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Mm. But they ain't feeling it. They don't care. You keep saying the same thing every day, every day, every day, every day, same thing, every day, like a broken record, hallelujah, Jesus is Lord, hallelujah, ah, and they want to hear it, mm -mm. don't nobody want to hear it, don't nobody, don't nobody cur, ain't nobody okay with that, hmm, but then you leave, one day you leave, that's your feet off, eh, spit on the ground as you get in a day of judgment for Solomon Gomorrah are much better than for that time, and in the first few days after you left, they first start talking among each other, on some, she had to go. That nasty little Christian had to go. She was never right for us. She was always at you irritating us with her judgmentalism. She was satanic and dull. We don't like her anyway. Besides, anybody got some champagne in these streets? Let's pop some champagne. Let's pop some champagne. Because she gone now. She gone now. She gone. She gone. 
She gone. Yeah, and they have a party on the first day. They have a party on the first day on some look at me, I'm partying. <laughs> look at me in my party. Mm. That's the first day. But you in the new town, this is kind of dried up, used to like the street evangelist, hey? Like, wow. Somebody just walked up yesterday and me started speaking. Hey guys, Jesus Lord, hallelujah, Jesus Lord, hallelujah, Jesus Lord. And even though nobody's throwing bananas and peaches at you, they're just looking at you and some. Oh wow, there's like somebody in the street. What are they saying? Like, oh, huh? Oh, oh. And then they ignore you for the first day. Keep ignoring you, eh? And some, like, there's somebody at the street corner. Like, whatever. But they're not persecuting you, eh? Your life is a lot easier here. It's kind of peachy, but you still don't have friends yet. You know, it's quiet. Hallelujah, Jesus Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus Lord. Mmm. And they will be looking at you in this new town on some, what is she saying? Hello, hello. Mom, Dad, there's like this new person on the street. They keep saying the same thing. Want to hear what they got to say? I don't know. I don't know. And they just walk right by you as they go to school, go to work, come back, buy coffee near the stand where it is that you are preaching. Hallelujah. Jesus. But they don't persecute you. They just stand there and say, okay, somebody made a decision to one day just put a podium on our streets and start telling us about this guy called Jesus. But in the town that you left back there, eh? Yeah, now it's day two. It's day two. And it's starting to get nice and somber now. It's starting to get nice and sad now. Because the preacher they used to out here mock and throw peaches and bananas at try to make the guy slip on the banana peel. Mmm. Yeah. Not their second day in the room. And this time around, their attitude on some, yeah, celebrate good times, carbo! Yeah, that's what's good. Mm. Second day, the party's over. They now have to clean up all the dirt from the party from yesterday. And the people cleaning up are like, ooh, whoa, it's quiet, eh? Like, say it's quiet. It's really quiet. It's really quiet. Anyway, whatever, so, what are you doing tomorrow? Let's go to the party. Let's go to the party again. Third day comes. While the preacher is in the new town. Hallelujah, Jesus Lord. And people are still walking by on some, huh? What was that? Like, what, what are they saying? What? Second day, she's still ignored in the new town, but not persecuted. But the second day, she is uh, on the other side, visibly felt. The, the, the absence of. The absence of the street evangelist is felt. Second day only. Yeah. But then they're still acting like, nah. They had to go. Maybe we can stand her. She sucked. Yeah. Hmm. A whole week goes by, and now it starts to feel like, whoa, may- maybe, 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 maybe a street evangelist died. Like, may- maybe they died. Yeah, like, maybe they died. They passed away. That's why they didn't come. Cause they've been here for like three years straight, and now they're disappeared. Maybe they died. The street evangelist is dead. That must be the reason why they're not coming back. And so they go into an occult room, and they do a ritual. <laughs> Which is what the Lord showed me. They go into an occult room, and they do a ritual. To ask, is this person still alive? Did this person kill themselves because they were so miserable that we hated them? Is this person killed? Did they kill themselves because they were miserable because nobody embraced their message? Everybody thought they sucked. And did this person kill? Are they dead? Did they get in a car accident? Why? Why are they not here for a week? A week and a half. And then their little mirror mirror on the wall tells them, this person is still alive and well. Their heart is still beating. They just don't care to come here to talk to you every day. And that's when it starts to hit them. That so, I mean, they just left, they quit. And because that street evangelist was out here, hallelujah, Jesus Lord, hallelujah, Jesus Lord, for 10 years straight, they know that that street evangelist is too long suffering and too constantly going back to the drawing board to try again and again and again to have truly quit ministry. They know deep down in their members, deep, deep down inside, that there is no way that the street evangelists actually quit ministry. There's no way. They did not just down tools on Jesus. They didn't walk away. This person has been walking fervently with Christ all this time. And every day they came like clockwork, consistently, without fail, to evangelize the same bunch of recalcitrant folk. So there is absolutely no way under heaven Seeing as we have concluded using our occult paraphernalia, there is no way that seeing as we can confirm they're alive through our occult magic, we know that it's highly unlikely that they have quit ministry. It's highly unlikely that they have quit 
ministry. And it's also highly unlikely that they have quit Jesus. If this person is still alive, because we persecuted them for so long, there's no way that they are just sitting around, gathering dust, smoking the air like it's a cigarette. They have probably tried again. And so, upon discovering this, that's when then things start to get somber. I have been in my old ministry for years now, literally a decade, where I was going nowhere, being bewitched by my entire country to go nowhere. And every day like clockwork, not the whole 10 year cycle, however, but the past two years, I've been consistently uploading on that channel. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. And they threw bananas and peaches <laughs> and all different kinds of nasty other things at my feet. Men tried to bewitch me to be with them. They, they cast spells. They told me to go. And last week after I walked away, within the first day or two, I saw a celebration where they were toasting and cheersing that I finally stopped uploading. I finally stopped uploading because I was consistently uploading for years. I was literally consistently uploading for years. And then one day I just stopped. Now, being that spoiled and being that used to persecuting an evangelist, you will know the resolve of that evangelist. You will know how strongly they love God. You will also know how much they just keep going back to the drain board. You will know that they come rain or shine. You will know that they come rain or shine to the street. Whether or not it's a good day, a bad day, a mediocre day, they come. They come. They come and they record. They come and they speak. They come and they upload. Even when nobody's looking at them. Like even when they've got zero views on a video, they still upload. Even when they've got zero views on a short, they still upload. Even when they've got nobody trying to hear them, they still upload. Even when they are under a severity of demonic attack, they still upload. Every day, hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Ha, every day, every day. And they've been doing this consistently for a decade. For years. Yeah. When they stop, reasonable men, reasonable women will conclude that there is no way that they've stopped ministry. They have not just stopped. They, they can't have. They can't have. That's how a person has given up. It's not an, it, it, it's unlikely. It's uncharacteristic of them. It's highly unlikely. It's possible, but it's unlikely. Extremely unlikely. Highly unlikely. Yeah. It's possible, but unlikely. Yeah. And so, because of their recognition of how unlikely it is that they've stopped ministry, even though this evangelist has dusted their feet off, moved to another town to try and reach them for Christ, and is trying to be consistent with them too, hoping that they'll be better with reception of the gospel message. Yeah, they are nonetheless rocking up, maybe not as frequently, perhaps maybe not daily, maybe not all hours of the day, and maybe not all eight hours of a working day, but they are consistent, they are coming through. They're still trying to evangelize them, and it's slow, seeing as they've already built a, a, an angry base a mean base. They were only, you know, like it's written in God's word that a prophet has no honor in his own hometown. So when you preach to Nazareth, you could reach one or two, maybe three, five people for Christ. Yeah. But everybody else is just going to hate you. Yeah. That's how it was in my old channel. I was speaking to a whole bunch of people from my nation and people from who knew me from my life, family members, former friends, colleagues, etc. And these people had had links to my channels for years. And I was only able to reach in that channel a very negligible remnant of people who actually liked me. But everybody else was just a hater. A hater. Do you understand? Everybody else wanted nothing to do with me. My videos did so badly in that space. Because I was speaking to a conglomerate of naysayers who hated the gospel coming from somebody in their own hometown. They could not stand a Nazarene speaking to them in Nazareth. They wanted, I don't know, an American. They wanted a Brazilian. They wanted a... Uh, a Swiss man or a Swiss woman, an Australian, a Canadian, anything. But where does that I come from? Yeah. They were unprepared to hear it from me. And some of them, because they knew me personally, kept on throwing a whole bunch of witchcraft. So I was only able to snatch off from the flames of hell a remnant of people, like a negligible number, perhaps those under five. Just I could count them on my one hand or on my ten fingers and toes over years of evangelism, over hours of copious content that I would upload daily. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And instead, they insisted that I go be like Bay, Beyonce. I go and be like Tony Braxton. I go make like Whitney Houston. I go make like Katy Perry and grab all my skills, my gifts, and my talents and squander them in the entertainment industry that's going to make me walk away from the holy God when it wasn't broken, but I try to fix it. They have been trying to make me walk away from Christ to use my skills, my gifts, my talents for darkness. 
And I've been saying, yo, I've been snatched off from the flames. Can't nobody steal God from me? Because can't nobody steal God at all. But they have been trying to make me walk away from Jesus Christ. So, I mean, really, a time like that, what do you do? You walk away, right? You butt, you, 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 you dust your feet off. You, you, you crack the dust on the ground and you leave it on their faces. Yeah. It's so what I did, you guys. I did just that, walked away, and it's only been just under two weeks now since I've been gone. And in the beginning, they were largely celebratory, especially the women. But now I'm getting nightmares, dreams, visions, and also spiritual abuse. I'm getting spiritual attack, as in a barrage of very heavy hard knock spells, just as I already predicted in the, predicted in the last long form video that I did that this would come. The spells that are being cast on me are to make me come back. They want me to show them what I am doing. So they have a party first that I'm gone. They succeeded with their, uh, succeeded, sorry, with their occult rituals. And then when they realize that I'm not dead because they looked into their occult paraphernalia, they have a way of finding out if somebody that they have done a death ritual on has actually died. If they have no way of confirming that they've died through the grapevine. If they don't get news or information of this person's life, they can actually check using occult paraphernalia. If somebody is still breathing, if there's still a heartbeat, if there is still a belief on the radar where this person is concerned. So I had a vision, a, a, a word of knowledge slash vision this past 24 hours of a man confirming that I am still alive and feeling raw about the fact that they recognize that it's highly unlikely that I've quit ministry because I've never been one to do that. All I've been doing the past couple of years that I've been persecuted by these people is starting again in time, starting again in time. Like I don't, I've got, I literally, I walked away from four ministries. I walked away from four YouTube channels. Make that five, because the fifth one was a fitness. But in terms of ministry, I walked away from four channels. And the only reason I had four channels where I was uploading the exact same content across four channels was because I kept starting new channels due to the witchcraft blockages that kept on getting thrown at me on whatever channel I was uploading on. But at the fourth channel, I decided that I'm going to stop uploading because what's the point? Not uploading, sorry, but uh, creating new channels. So I just uploaded on four YouTube channels without. I uploaded on, uploaded on four YouTube channels without going anywhere. And recently, I got blocked across all four of them. I've already explained that in my testimony video. And then in the last video that I uploaded, I gave that story. And now I'm here telling the story and I'm not being viewed in my new channel. It's okay. It's all right. It's new. It's fresh. And lastly, people tend to underestimate newer channels and it's always been slow for me to grow. So I'm, I'm not really groveling because I recognize that ultimately at some point my content will get perused. It will get viewed. But, uh, before then, I am dealing with people who are aware that this is a woman that when she fails in one place, she tries again elsewhere. She's been just constantly trying, going back to the drawing board for years attempting to rise up from the ashes over and over and over again. She doesn't give up. So chances are, wherever this human being is, she's trying again. But this time around, unlike in the past, because she's been typical, she's been predictably happy to share on a rooftop her testimony. She's been sharing details of what she's going to do tomorrow. And this time around, because she realized that we are policing her, and also because she realized that upon monitoring her, we are responding horrifically. We are dogs and we are pigs. Do not cast your pearls to the pigs, nor give what is sacred to dogs, because she has discovered that all we do is persecute everything she speaks. We, therefore, have been left this time. They, they are, they, they're finally waking up to realize that I walked away. I already walked away before on Facebook, where they were, and they followed me to YouTube because they knew my YouTube handles. This time around, they have no way of finding me. Not only because I didn't tell them uh, where I, I was going, I gave them no links, no directions to where it is that I'm now residing. That's the first thing, right? I didn't tell them where I was going. And then secondly, I also did not tell them that I was going animated. So they're not looking for an animated channel. They're looking for my face. They're looking for me. They're looking for the person that 
was always uploaded, they're looking for somebody creating another environment that looks just like me. So they're actively scouring the internet looking for me. They're also searching for, from what the Lord is showing me, they're searching using all of the various aliases that I had. So not various, I only had one alias. Like there was this one alias name that I had that I had used for years. They've been searching for me using that word, that word. One particular word, they've been searching for it. First, they are using my name and surname, my ID name and surname. And they're also using my alias that I created for myself. And they're not able to find me anywhere because I changed everything to animated for Jesus. And I don't use my real name, my real surname. And I also will not disclose what country I'm from because I don't want them even slightly being aware of what's going on over here. If that or anybody should happen upon my content, they must assume that I am from an, any other country other than theirs. Any, I have a part, I have an accent when I speak that makes a lot of people assume that I'm from the US. They assume that I'm from the US because of my, the way that I speak. And understand the only reason why I have somewhat of an American accent when I speak every so often is because I've been underground and persecuted for a decade where I've been isolated from my entire country. And the only access to people that I have had has been media. It's been basically either television or YouTube. And since most of the content that I consume is American, it literally influenced my accent. It changed it slightly. It changed my English accent from the one from the country that I come from to slightly American. It's like living in the U.S. for 10 years as somebody coming from another country. And so when you go back home, you have somewhat been influenced in your accent by American culture. That's why my accent changed. I didn't choose for it to happen that way. But all I was listening to and all I was in front of, it's like these people so buried me that I literally had no one from my country for a friend, for company, for a daily encounter. All I had was the screen of my computer, the screen of a television, and most of the either entertainment or content I consumed was from American content creators and American television shows until eventually after watching enough American TV in a hostage taken room like somebody kidnapping you for 10 years and all you have is a tv in that room with one particular country's channels playing until you literally adopt that country's accent because you don't have your own fellow countrymen around you you don't have your own fellow let's say if you're from brazil brazilians around you if you're from australia australians around you if you're from canada canadians around you if you're from the united kingdom from england english men and women around you yeah Instead of being encircled by your own countrymen, you're encircled by television, which has largely broadcast men and women from a, a, a one particular country. I have not only consumed American content, but it's been the bulk of my consumption. That's the way that it is for pretty much everybody on Earth. Most of our consumption, if at all, all we English-speaking countries, is American. It's just the way that the social media has seen it fit to make things that way because they're a superpower that are trying to keep that power. They're trying to maintain their power. So they are shoving their culture down the whole planet's throat. So if they're only going to get recommended videos on your YouTube landing page, most of them are going to be from the U.S. And so largely you're going to be clicking on U.S. content creators. That's just how it is. That's just the way that it is. Yeah. So my English accent got con transformed from a combination of my country's accent to an American accent. Such that if at all I'm wearing a, an avatar, like this here adult, like something that is concealing my face. Yeah. Nobody would be able to tell that I'm from the country that I'm from, that I am from. Nobody would be able to know that I am a this country lady. Yeah. Nobody would know. They wouldn't know. They would assume first that I'm American. They'd probably think I'm American. They would think that, <laughs> if anything, when I was still in my old channel, back before I got persecuted by a barrage of insults coming from my country, one lady commented in my YouTube channel and said that, um, where are you from? Uh, you know, I would like to know, well, what church you're attending, what state you live in. And I was like, whoa, I'm, I, I, I'm glad that you are looking for a church and I wish I could help you, but I'm not in your country. I live in this particular nation. So I can't help you. I can't, I can't help you with a church in the U.S. Cause I'm not in the U.S. And she was like, whoa, okay. I, I thought you were American. Sorry. I thought you were from these streets. That's why I asked you what church you attend. Cause I like the way that you think. I like the way that you give the gospel. And I wanted to see if maybe I can't relocate to your church. I was like, no, I'm not American. I'm from my country. She's like, oh, okay, my bad. Yeah, my bad. And that was before I even concealed my face. That was before I even concealed my face. An American lady assumed I was from her country. She assumed I was from her country. 
a black American lady. She assumed that I was from her country, so that's just the way that my accent is. And it's not that I changed it, I didn't make an effort to adjust it. I didn't, yeah, until one day I discovered that I had this accent. And this accent was as a result of persecution. My country buried me in a hole and isolated me from everybody. They ascertained that there was nobody around me from my own nation that is talking to me daily. And all that I was consuming was entertainment and content online from one particular nation largely until their accent rubbed off on me over a decade. It's been 10 years. So, I mean, of course, if you're going to be sitting in a country for 10 years, unless you're strong like Trevor, Noah, or like Jimia, any other person that is from another country that goes and lives in the U.S., uh, maybe Akon, maintaining your accent, even though you come from another nation. I, I, I don't know anybody that has stayed in a country for extended periods of time and not been influenced. I, I just, like, yeah, it, I guess the, there are people like that. But they're strong. I don't know how you, you, you don't take on a country's accent when people are always talking like that around you. I just, I don't know how. It's, it's so hard to maintain what you originally come from. But anyway, that whole story that I, that I gave, that I told, um, was in order that you might gauge even with the transformation of my accent from the one that is from my nation. Yeah. Even with the transformation of my accent, more so am I concealed. More so am I hidden because not only do I change my voice, so I, I use voice changing features on my video editing software. I also now have a different accent, so there's like literally nothing that helps them figure out that this is a woman from this country and it's very likely that one. I've been hidden because God saw that my Nazarene disposition in Nazareth is doing nothing for me. So however, these Nazareans that have given no honor to a prophet among them, a prophetess, whatever you want to call me. These Nazareans that have seen no value in their own evangelist are obsessed and, uh, and uh, possessive of me. And upon me disappearing initially was celebratory because they imagined I needed to be shut up. Initially they imagined I needed to be shut up. Do you understand? But then as the, literally it's only been a week and a bit, I expect that this, this insanity to come out much later. I expected it to linger a little longer. I did, but because I was so consistent in uploading over two years, it's hitting them hard. Disappearance for just a week and a bit. And so not only do they go to the drawing board to look into their mirrors and the occult to gauge where I'm at, if I'm still alive, they confirm I'm alive. Upon confirming I'm alive, conclude that there is no way I've quit ministry. So now they're searching for me. Now they're looking for me. They're looking for me. They're, they're literally typing in my old name, my old alias, my full name, my full ID name. They're searching for a face that looks like mine. They're clicking on videos with people whose faces look like mine. Only to be disappointed once they're inside the video to discover that it's not her. They're searching for me. And they're not finding me. They will not find me. There is nothing that would ever make them assume I went animated. There is nothing that would ever make them assume as well that I, um... I went... Never mind animated, but... Changed my voice and everything. The tone of my ministry. Because the last video that I did in the vid in the channel... The last the channels that I had. The last video that I did, I spoke there like I was coming back tomorrow. And indeed, I intended to. But I made a decision afterwards that we're not doing this. I'm not going to keep getting harassed. The Lord is the one that extracted me out of there. And so these Nazareans that spat on my feet as I tried to award them the gospel that they might be healed are now looking for me, but in a very shy disposition in that they're not with each other confessing that they wish they hadn't done it. They have a regret of having let me go. And now they are going back to the crazy drawing board to tweak. Are you listening to me? They are tweaking their sorcery to restore me back to uploading on that channel. They are trying to bring me back by making me get, like, they, they blocked everything. They made sure that I get nobody viewing me. They made sure I have no new subscribers. They made sure that I am so frozen then I will finally capitulate to essentially being like Katy Perry. I could not sell gospel music, so I sold myself to, my soul to the devil. They expected me to react like Katy Perry, and when I didn't, but rather fled. If they persecute you in one time, flee to the next. They then tweaked their sorcery because they realized that there is nothing in it for me to return to an old channel. What is the point of me coming to talk every single day, uploading content, so they can just sit outside of my life and juice the blood out of my system until I have perished. What is the point when nobody is hearing or heeding me? So 
They're literally mm-hmm. trying to recover some of my gains to me. However, still making me grow at a snail's pace. You know that level of um megalomaniacal desire to control a human being. Like, stay, please don't go, but we're, we're definitely not going to give you a whole thriving future. But you, you cannot leave altogether. That's the thing about being an, a, a heater amidst a frozen people that think that you need them because they are the plug. And in order for you, you as a heater to work, you got to be plugged into them. But they don't realize that they're freezing. And so for those reasons, if at all, you don't glow in front of them. They freeze to death, but they take you for granted because apart from them, you cannot glow. But apart from your glow, they cannot live. It's an exchange, a mutual benefit. And they went and took away everything that gives me an incentive to continue to glow in front of them. So now I am a heater somewhere where I'm struggling to glow because nobody's watching me. Nobody's encouraging me. Nobody is coming to subscribe to my channel or watch my videos. I am uploading these laborious videos that also take a long time, a, a long amount of time for me to edit. And with me uploading these very lengthy videos that are getting nowhere. And never mind lengthy, but lots of shorts as well. With me getting absolutely nowhere. It's hard for me to rock up and hope that somebody is going to allow me to plug into them and so glow. In other words, somebody to motivate me enough to keep doing content daily. To keep uploading shorts. I'm very de- discouraged. I'm very demotivated right now. And I'm gaining very few subscribers. But you see, I'm gaining subscribers at all. Whereas in the old space, I had literally been halted to zero. I got frozen to uploading and getting no views. As in zero across the board. No new subscribers. Who in the world continues to upload content in a space like that? Who? Whereas in my new space, I'm at least gaining new followers on Twitter. And I'm at least gaining subscribers on YouTube. Even though it's slow, there are nonetheless one or two people that are happy to let me plug into them. Because they're happy to support the work I'm trying to do for Jesus. At least, like, it is at least moving. Any kind of movement is always appreciated, is always welcome. Whereas back there, it was just dead quiet. Despite having amassed for myself somewhat of a subscriber base, they still blinded my subscribers from seeing me. So there is no incentive for me to just keep on rocking up and trying to make people that have made me their source of light insist that I stick around despite having parched me. They've starved me. They've made me anorexic of any affection and any support. But I must just keep rocking up to glow on my own reserves. I won't do it. So now they want to tweak their sorcery. They are literally actively working to tweak their sorcery so as to restore some kind of semblance of support for me in that old space that I might come back. They want to try and bring me back to keep uploading videos to warm their cold and freezing bodies to thaw them essentially these defrosted buffoons they want me to rock up and thaw them (laughs) however for a small fee like just a small little incentive like a tiny little amount of support like a negligible amount of support but at least it's better than nothing because we know that you can work for nothing we know that you can work for nothing lady nothing at all So, seeing as we know that you can work for close to nothing, we'll give you close to nothing. Because right now we gave you nothing. So far we've given you, we we, we just made sure you get nothing. So we'll go back to giving you close to nothing. So you can come back and waste your life in front of us. (laughs) Yeah, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. They're starting to miss me to a point where they can't find my ministry, but they want to bring me back to the old space to either tell them where my new ministry is at, or to keep on uploading in that old space where I've got nothing but pigs and dogs. And they are now up, they are, they're freezing, they're starting to get cold. Oh, I had a vision of some woman, literally, you know, the way that you rub your body when you're freezing. Yeah, she was doing that because I left my ministry. She was rubbing her body like that because I left my ministry. But she was among my persecutors. Yeah, they're going to want to try to bring me back, but I'm not going back. I'm not going back. My decision is made up. <laughs> my mind is made. I'm not going to cast my pearls to the pigs, but in the new environment... In the new space, my animated channel, hello, mm, it's quiet, the growth is slow, and, and like, yeah, I'm probably not even getting viewed at all in my long form content, the only videos so far that are getting viewed are my shorts, and those shorts, even then, like, it's just a small negligible number of views, and sometimes I will produce a video that will get no views at all, even in a short, so it's bad, like, it's really quiet, but, you know, it's the beginning. However, there is also traction, like a small, negligible, but nonetheless existing traction. And in this space, I'm not persecuted. 
I'm not being afflicted physically. I am not being harassed by anybody watching my content in this space. It is a peace I have that I didn't have back there. And over time, as the street evangelist is like, Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Eventually, people are going to gather around me and be like, Hey, who's this person? What are they saying? And because I'm not in Nazareth anymore, because I'm not in my country, at least not in spurt, I might be here physically, but in spurt, I've gone. People won't assume I am from the nation. Even people from my nation are not going to assume I am from the nation. And so they will likely receive me better because they'll think I'm American. They'll think I'm American. Hallelujah, Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so they will start to listen. And when then they listen to me, they will support me better than I was supported back there. They will enable my calls along better. They will subscribe to me. They will enable my monetization. They will do better by me over time. I don't know how long this time is going to be, but right now, encouragement is hard to come by. Encouragement is really hard to come by because I come from a very severely persecuting time. And I have little encouragement, little faith in humanity. And it's hard for me to produce content that's not being viewed. But I have to keep on striving because absent of striving, I'm dead. I have to keep on pushing. But at least I'm not in an environment that insists that I should settle, make like Katy Perry walk away from God, make like Sam Smith and sing an unholy, no, an, an unholy song. People who are trying to make me apostatize from a truth I once held fast to. Because this world loves to tarnish beautiful things. This world loves to destroy beautiful things. This world adores to devastate that which God made precious. So they want to go and grab a godly woman and make her sell her soul to the devil. I cannot be cast out of heaven, neither plucked out of the hand of God. But they are trying and in their endeavors I will literally follow me all across social media to try and find me. But this time around, I'm buried behind an avatar. My voice cannot be recognized by any software because I have changed my voice characters. Neither can my face be recognized by any software because I have put an avatar on my face. And neither can anybody recognize that I am from the country that I am from because I have deliberately gone out of my way to conceal that nation, my name, and my identity. And due to my accent being so transformed to sound largely American, everybody's going to assume I'm from the US. My little avatar, when it speaks, sounds American. It sounds American. If, if, if your eyes are closed and you are sleeping, you will assume you are listening to an American speaking. And that is how I prefer to keep it. So that people from my nation won't think I'm from there. Because right now they are bewitching content creators on YouTube based on them being from around these streets. People are bewitching. Like my nation is so evil. They're so full of sorcery that they keep on bewitching everyone in the country to go nowhere. They don't want people to thrive, to succeed. So they are literally killing their own country. They're, they're shooting their own nation in the foot out of jealousy. Nothing but. So to see a thriving content creator from my country is rare to come by because of the amount of sorcery that kids done on complete strangers online. I'm not going to be a statistic from my country who fell apart because witches would not stop cursing her. I am going to escape the grain of my crazy country by simply acting like I'm from somewhere else. Literally, I'm going to pretend I'm an American until I have monetized and gotten so big on YouTube that everybody will be shocked that I'm actually rather from this particular country. I am going and do it like clockwork. And by the time I get unveiled for who it is that I truly am, they will be shocked out of their minds that this entire time I was hidden behind America. I am literally going to hide behind the United States of America to escape my country. It's ironic, isn't it? They've always been the ones to salvage persecuted Christians across the world. And now I'm going to be salvaged by their accent. Out from the grain of a crazy, persecuting nation that wanted nothing to do with me. It's only been a week and a bit. It's only been, been a week and a bit. And already they are shaking. They're getting withdrawal from the drug that they have made me. And it's only going to get worse from here. It's going to go downhill. The spiritual attack has it has been ex exorbitant. They've gone to murder, right? They've tried to do death spells that I keep failing. They want me to commit suicide. They want me to die. Some of the people who want me to die, even in my family, they want me to die. They want me to end my life because of having thwarted the living daylights out of me. But I am going to live. I'm going to thrive and I'm going to survive. I'm going to push and I'm going to grow a YouTube channel. I'm going to monetize and I'm going to get out of the grain of my country's wickedness. And by the time I am revealed for who I truly am, they will be so ashamed of themselves that they did this to a woman. They're going to be so ashamed of themselves that they literally tried to hide a prophet of God. Somebody who has been given a prophetic gifting to prophesy over their nation. And they rejected them. Not only did they reject them, but they tried to kill them. They literally tried to end my life. And if I did not flee that space on time, I would have inevitably perished. The Lord rescued me. And now that I am no longer chilling on their street corners evangelizing them, they're going to miss the voice in the wilderness. 
like John the Baptist speaking of the coming of the Son of Man. They don't miss the daily evangelist that they killed. They removed that evangelist off the street. They tried to rape that evangelist. They tried to have sex with that evangelist. They tried to dismember that evangelist from Christ. And when then that evangelist left, they tried to tweak their control, their iron fist over the evangelist to be less daunting and glaring. They tried to make that evangelist less persecuted because they wanted that evangelist to stay in a country that hates them. But she stayed gone anyway. She left. She did not come back. And after a couple of weeks, I've been prophesying this, they're going to perish. Some will repent a remnant. The rest will perish. They're going to perish. They're going to die. Some of them who persecuted me like this. So I'm constantly trying to kill, decimate, massacre a woman that walked away because you don't want to hear what she had to say. I have a cousin that keeps on trying to kill me. And the Lord showed me that if she does not repent, she will get into a car accident and die. Because this cousin has access to me, to my family. Whereas all the other monsters that pursue me on the internet don't know me. They can't touch me because they aren't in my life. But my cousin can have access to understanding what's going on with me. And by mere virtue of that, she's facing imminent death. Because of spells that they keep on casting, they are literally facing extinction if they don't repent. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord and dust our feet off from a country that splits out its evangelists, that kills its prophets, that destroys the servants of God. That country will lose every last one of them. My channel did badly because they try to keep me in my country. Not anymore, because I'm American now. Not anymore. I'm officially now an American content creator and nobody is going to know any different. Nobody's going to know that I'm from where I'm from. So that is what I, I wanted to come here and just speak. Unlike in my old channel, I'm not going to be uploading content every day here probably because I'm I'm very demotivated. <laughs> I'm demotivated. They, they want me to flex. They, sorry, these people who, who hurt me like this, they want to flex the destruction of my person. Look, we destroyed her. Look, she went nowhere. But God is not going to give them an opportunity to flex because they know that I'm trying somewhere else. They know that I'm trying somewhere else. But this time around, they don't have access to me. No more rapist men looking at me. No more jealous women looking at me. No more murderous psychopaths insisting that I be finished off. So I just wanted to rock up and let you guys know that in the new time that I am evangelizing and please... Don't just walk right by me. Please subscribe. Please follow. Please like. And please share. Help me grow. Help me escape the grain of a crazy Nazarean country that hates its own prophets. Until such time that I see you next time, I hope that you guys have been edified. Signing on in the name of Jesus Christ, and I made it for Jesus. Peace.